Hello, I'm Joel, and welcome to another Gen AI workflow tutorial. Today, you'll learn how to create cinematic storyboards using Leonardo. Storyboarding for films and video projects can be a time-consuming process, particularly if you're anything like me and can't draw to save yourself. With Leonardo, you can quickly create cinematic storyboards in a variety of styles, bringing your work to life from script to screen. Today, we'll go through four steps to help you create professional cinematic storyboards, generating initial visuals, building out your scene, creating consistent characters, and finally, controlling image composition and style. By the end of this session, you'll be able to create cinematic storyboards like these ones I made for a submarine thriller, including creating shots in a variety of camera angles, character mock-ups, and stylized frames. This is what you'll see when you log in to Leonardo AI, the home screen of the Leonardo app. Here, you can access all our tools, including the real-time canvas, universal upscaler, motion, and canvas editor. For this workflow, we'll be using image creation. Now, you can find it here in the center of the screen or here in the sidebar. To create some base assets for our storyboards, let's use the Cinematic Kino preset. Cinematic Kino is great for film work, but you'll find other presets that are better for graphics or illustrations. For the preset style, let's leave it on cinematic. You can change this to guide the style of your output in different ways, like fashion, retro, long exposure, etc. We'll keep it on fast mode today, since we're ideating quickly. Now, let's write a prompt. We're working on a scene for our submarine thriller that's going to start with a wide shot. Pretty standard coverage. Kino works pretty well with simple prompts, so I'm going to use this one. Wide shot, submarine, floating in the open ocean. Note that I've included the camera angle here to guide the generations. And we hit generate. Okay, these are looking pretty good. Awesome. Let's start to build out our scene. Okay, we've got our wide. Now let's create shots of our characters. I'll start with a male submarine captain. He's gonna be our villain. So the prompt will read, a male submarine captain, evil and brooding. Again, keeping the prompt here pretty simple. Um, so I've just hit generate and let's see what we get. Okay, sweet. You'll note that by default, we tend to get mid shots of our subjects. Now it's time to make his counterpart, our hero a female submarine captain. So for her, I'll change the prompt and hit generate. For good measure, I'll add another one where I ask for a close-up shot just to show you the difference. Okay, we've got a nice batch of female submarine captains here. She should work nicely to be our hero. But since this is a thriller, we're going to need tension. So let's get a shot of something foul happening. Now, I'm going to prompt for an extreme close-up, um, and this time I'm going to want a macro of blood on the side of a naval ship. For this one, I'm going to set the preset style to cinematic close-up. And now I'm going to hit generate. Awesome. Now we've got our wide of the submarine, we've got a couple shots of our different characters, and we've got our close-up of blood on the side of the ship. Now let's take some more control of the composition of these images in the next step. Now, let's say you wanna create some consistent characters across your storyboard. This is perfect for letting you match a character's face across shots or if you want to include the face of the actor who's been cast in the role. Let's take that male submarine captain we were looking at earlier. Now, I'll find that image in my feed and I'll use this button here to reuse the prompt. But this time around, I'm going to add a character reference. To do this, I'm going to navigate to the image guidance suite right here. This is our set of tools for taking creative control of your outputs. Then I'm going to click on Character Reference. 
This allows you to create a consistent character based on a reference image, like a photograph or headshot. For this one, I'll use an image that I uploaded earlier of this guy right here. Now we can control the weighting of the image. That is how much the reference image will affect the output, picking from low, mid, or high. Now we can control the weighting of the image. That is how much the reference image will affect the output, picking from low, mid, and high. Today, let's do a version on mid and one on high to see the difference. Sweet. All right. Now we've got a couple versions of our submarine captain that you can roll out across your storyboard. As you can see, it really got at the essence of our actor. You can see that it got my eyes, my schnoz, my teeth, all there in the gems. Now let's say we want to control the composition of a shot, say a submarine floating deep in the ocean. For this one, I'm going to use the Edge to Image tool. Again, you can find this in Image Guidance just here. Edge to Image finds the outline of your uploaded image and uses those lines to guide the generation. For this one, I'm going to use a royalty-free 3D render of a submarine I have in my library to guide that composition. Now, for the weighting, I'll pull it down to 0.6. This gives the AI a bit of latitude to adhere to that outline while still adding in plenty of details. I'm going to use a simple prompt. Wide shot, a submarine floating in deep water covered in moss. And see what that gets me. Awesome. Now, as you can see, we've kept the outline of that reference image while the AI has filled in the details. Now say we want to have this same image, same composition, but in a different style, say for a dream sequence. To do this, navigate to the image guidance menu and select style reference. Style reference uses an uploaded image to change the aesthetic of your output, including the color and lighting. I'll use this vaporwave style image I generated earlier and set the weighting to mid. Fantastic. We've got a stylized version of our submarine with those pink clouds coming through and blending in with the water. There you have it. You've now learned how to create cinematic and consistent storyboards across your scene. Thanks for joining me and until next time.